honest, clean, likable. He was a player who scored more goals, assists, and points than Wayne Gretzky as a member of the Dallas Stars. He was a player who posted a lower goals against average than Dominic Hasek in NHL 07. A player who during the clutch and grab era did all the clutching and grabbing. A visionary, he saw a flaw within the rules of the game so he decided to force a change. Standing at 5 foot 10, 195 pounds, he's the super pest, chaos personified, agitator extraordinaire, Sean Avery. The year 1980 saw the birth of many great players such as Henrik Zetterberg, Vinny Le Cavalier, and the Sedin Twins, but none of them would end up being as influential as Sean Avery. Born in North York, Ontario, Canada, he was always destined for the headlines, and as he ascended through the ranks, he aspired to play in the NHL one day. Sean Avery didn't want to follow the typical Canadian dream to be drafted into the NHL, so he kept a low profile. As a result, he remained undrafted. He had decided to take the toughest path to the NHL to put himself to the test, kinda like a trial. And after he passed it with flying colors, the Red Wings came begging in 1999, signing him as a free agent. The year is now 2002 and the Red Wings had a star-studded lineup, yet they just couldn't get past the hump and were in the midst of a three-year Stanley Cup drought. They had no answers, so they had no choice but to turn to Sean Avery, who was absolutely the final piece to their puzzle, as they went on to win the Stanley Cup that year. Even though he would play less than half the games in the regular season and none in the playoffs, it was his presence in the press box which deterred the opposition from doing anything out of line. And because Avery didn't play the required amount of regular season games, his name was not engraved on the cup. But deep down, we all know he deserved to be. Sean Avery had conquered Detroit, and in 2003, he decided he needed a new challenge, so he accepted a trade to the LA Kings. Avery spent four years in Los Angeles, during which his sandpaper style of hockey rubbed off on the younger players. It was reported that Avery made fun of Dustin Brown for a speech impediment on numerous occasions, but that was not the full story. Like a blacksmith, Avery gave him a lot of heat and struck while the iron's hot, and Brown would be forged into a leader as he later captained the team to two Stanley Cups. Avery would be criticized for bullying, but perhaps he was just misunderstood, and perhaps his tough love was the catalyst for Dustin Brown's emergence as an impact player. Sean Avery's work in LA was complete, and in 2007, he was traded to the New York Rangers. He only lasted a little over a season in the Big Apple, but boy did he have an influence there. Sean Avery believed that in this world, there are those who follow rules and those who make them. And in 2008, in a first round series against the Devils, he decided to create a new rule. During a two-man advantage, Avery was the net front presence and after completely ignoring the puck in attempts to distract the goalie, the NHL created what is now known as the Avery Rule, which prohibits players from doing such a thing. And with that, Sean Avery was immortalized. During the 2008 offseason, Avery signed a four-year contract with the Dallas Stars, but he only ended up playing 23 games for them. After approaching reporters and badmouthing a couple of ex-girlfriends who were dating other hockey players, Avery was suspended by the NHL for six games. And after head coach Dave Tippett and captain Mike Medano had refused to accept him back on the team, he was sent down to the minors. Nearly a month later, the Stars placed him on re-entry waivers but was claimed by the Rangers, where he would spend the next few seasons. And in 2012, Avery announced his retirement, signaling an end to a career that had meant so much for his fans. Sean Avery will be remembered for his desire to do just about anything to win. He showed up every single game when the rest of the team had given up. He was like an energizer bunny, ready to pull his team into the fight on a nightly basis. He identified the heart and soul of every team as the goalie, and without fail, he tried to get them off their game, even though he knew he'd draw the ire of their teammates. That takes character. 
It was mentioned earlier in the video that Sean Avery was an honest player, and he definitely wasn't afraid to voice his opinions. Savagely chirping his opponents on the ice and making bold statements off of it, he stated what was on his mind time and time again. That is admirable. I had also mentioned he was a clean player. Yeah, he made sure to take showers after practices and games, but his play was also not dirty by any means. He didn't headhunt or throw career-ending hits. His objective had always been to injure his opponent's egos, never their bodies. That shows integrity. Sean Avery could be best described as a majestic lion. Never meant to be tamed nor controlled, he was the true king of the land. He did things the way he wanted, when he wanted it. Eat or be eaten, adapt or perish. That's what made Sean Avery, Sean Avery. That's it for now. Happy April Fool's Day. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to help the channel grow. See you soon.